place and when he's working around you no matter how serious and ugly it looks when god is working in your life lives will be changed come on atmospheres will be made different minds will be changed don't you know that when you're around people that don't understand what you're going through, amen, as God begins to work and do what he does best in your life, lives will be transformed. How many want to live a life that causes lives and other people to be transformed as you come in and out of their presence? Come on. Amen. I want when I go into somebody's presence and I leave that they are blessed, that they are uplifted. Somebody say amen. 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 I thank God for Minister Janet Tucker in the house today. Amen. I thank God for her. I brought her name up just now to acknowledge her, but I also wanted to share with you that you cannot be in her presence for very long and you're not laughing. She laughs about the simplest of things that most people might not see the humor in it, but she will make you see the humor in it. She's just that full of joy. I love to be around her and she'll just be like, you know, whatever. Look, look, look. And she'll just start laughing and before you know it, you're laughing too. And sometimes she, her laughter is contagious. But she's been through some things and she's been through some horrendous things that when others have seen her go through it, and I don't believe most in here know what she's gone through, and I'm not going to put it in the microphone because I don't believe I know most of what she's gone through, but I know that whatever she's been through, no matter how sick she's been in her body, whenever we find Aunt Janet, she is laughing and glorifying God. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Amen. So she's in our midst today, amen, and we thank God for you. I'm glad you're here, amen. I'm glad you're here in our midst, amen. Praise God, and I, I'm just so thankful that she's here. Amen. I praise God for her. Amen. The God is doing a work in every one of our lives. And I was thinking about the resurrection this morning, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, you really can't appreciate my resurrection if you don't understand the death to begin with. You can't really understand why it's a big deal that I got up if you don't know why I died to begin with. It doesn't mean anything to most people. It's just a day that we hunt eggs and pet rabbits. Come on. Amen. It's not really anything. Oh, it's the beginning of spring. But this represents so much more than bunny rabbits and Easter eggs. Amen. I can get a lesson out of the Easter egg. The egg is three parts, but it's one egg. So you can teach you a lesson on the Trinity there. It's the white, the yolk, and the shell, but it's one egg, three parts. You can talk about the Trinity. So I can get a Bible lesson out of that. Other than that, I just pretty much eat them. That's all I like to do with Easter eggs. Amen. But you can you can look at all of those things and you can enjoy the spring and everybody's got on their new clothes or their bright colored clothes and all of that. But if we don't really understand what happened when he died, the resurrection will not mean that much to us. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because it's just another death, just another story, just another something. But I tell you what, I've seen a lot of people die, but I haven't seen anybody get back up. But because he got back up, we're, we're here today. So look in your Bibles with me in the book of Matthew, the 28th, I'm sorry, 27th chapter. We're going we're gonna to look in on the crucifixion at the moment that he gave up the ghost. We're going to look in at that moment when he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Oh my God. He went through all of the things fulfilling scripture. And we could, we could go through the whole graphic detail of the crown of thorns. And the beating with the scourging. And the beating of the, of the cat of nine tails. And his back being beaten with the stripes. And we could see him walking down the Via Della Rosa with a rugged cross upon his raw back. And we could see him struggling to make it. And after a while, they summoned a man named Simeon to come and carry his cross for him. And where he made it up to Golgotha, where they laid him down and nailed his hands and nailed his feet and put him on that cross. Amen. And it hung him wide and hung him high and mocked him and put a sign over him and said, Behold the King of the Jews. We can look in at all of that as he went through all of that process for you and for me. But something was happening greater than anybody realize and even Jesus said on the cross as he hung there forgive them father for ah they don't even know what they are doing forgive them Lord he he could have called ten thousand angels come on and they could have come and then took him off that cross he could have come down and had the whole earth destroyed but yet the Bible says that he looked past the agony of the cross at the joy that lied ahead of him he looked past the agony he looked past the shame the Bible said, Cursed is every man and hang on a tree. He became cursed so that we can become blessed. Thank you, Lord. So we're looking in the 27th chapter of Matthew, the 51st verse. It says, And behold, the veil 
of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Right there, what was happening was we were being reconciled to the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and say, we were being reconciled. Because up until that point, no one could go into the holy of holies unless they were a priest. And they couldn't even go in just any kind of way. They had to go in on a certain day of the year and clean up a certain kind of way and wear a certain type of cloth and, and be all in this certain condition. They could not even enter into the holy of holies with a bead of perspiration upon their lip or they would be struck dead. They wore bells around their robe or, or uh, different things that made noise. And as long as they heard the rattling of those things on their robe, they knew that the priest was still alive. He wore a rope around his ankle so that if he fell dead in the presence of God, they could pull him out. Nobody could go in. But the Bible says right there in the 51st verse, it said, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain on the most sea, from the top to the bottom. In that moment, it was ripped from the top to the bottom so that they couldn't say somebody went in there and did it because it came from the top to the bottom and when that thing was oh my god when it was rent in half we can now come boldly before the throne of grace we have been reconciled to the presence of god i don't have to go through a priest and say forgive me father for i have sinned now if i got any catholic folks in here this morning don't get mad at me i'm just stating the bible i don't have to go to a priest and confess my sins to a man but i can go boldly to before the throne of mercy the mercy seat was there the presence of god was there and i can now say to him father here I am. Forgive me. Wash me, oh God, and make me clean. That ought to excite you right there. Amen. We don't have to go through anybody. We have been reconciled. After this happened, the earth did quake. Look at your name and say there was an earthquake. And the rocks rent. What does that mean? The rocks cracked in half. And the graves were open. And listen to this. Many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after <sighs> all of this stuff was going on while he was trying to work it out for us. Look at your neighbor and say he was working for us. Working for us. He said and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And here's what I want to get right here. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying truly this was the Son of God. Even the one who was set there by a Roman empire said, watch him, carry it out, go and do this. Pilate told them, he said, I find no fault with him, but nevertheless go ahead and Crucify him because that's what the people want. Yes. He took water and he washed his hands. So he said, I, I'm washing my hands of this. It's, it's, it's on y'all. And I read in the Bible where the people said, fine, let his blood be on us, but crucify him. But this Roman soldier, this centurion who's standing there, who was carrying out the very act of crucifying our Lord, who didn't really understand what all he was doing but just was watching what was happening while Jesus was going through the process of saving us Jesus. when he saw the earthquake and he heard about the veil being rent and he heard the darkness that came and all the things that happened in that moment he looked up and said truly this is the son of God truly this was the son of God I said to my wife this morning I said do you know who the first convert was after his death she said, I think it was Merrick. No, we were talking. I said, it was that centurion soldier standing at the foot of the cross. Even though he was the one who carried it out, he still turned around and was caused to believe. So what was dealing with me this morning, he said, there are so many people that in today's society, in today's church world, we, there are so many people that are distanced from God because they feel like they've done too much or they've gone too far or they said too much or they're living this way or that way. But even in all of that, if the man who nailed him to the cross can stand at the bottom of the cross and begin to believe, how much more can we who he did it for? How much more can we who he did it for? Come on, somebody. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. If he can stand at the foot of the cross and decide and declare, truly this was the Son of God, then what we've done, 
or where we've gone or what we've gotten involved in is not too much. The Bible said, whosoever believeth on him shall not, shall be saved. Come on, whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. How many believe that this morning? He, he, he did a great work. Jesus did a complete work. Amen. And even in his death, people's lives were being changed. Amen. Even in his death, in the three days that he was down, people's lives were being, people were watching all of the city was looking to see. All of Jerusalem was watching Amen. to see what's going to become of this man named Jesus. They went through so much. How many read in your Bible? They went through so much yes. to make sure his body wasn't stolen. Yes. <laughs> they planted and posted guards and they sealed it with a Roman seal and did all of these things to keep them from making it look like Jesus rose. They didn't have to make it look like he rose. Why? Because he rose. They didn't have to stage nothing because he got up. They didn't have to, no trickery, no smoke and mirrors because he got up. They didn't have to try to make it seem like something happened. When they found him, the stone was over there. The stone was over there. And as they stood in the, in the tomb looking for his body, yeah. bright, shining men stood there beside them and asked them a question. Why seek ye the living among the dead? We're not serving a dead God. We're not crying out to a dead God. There are many people who are worshiping a dead God. You know, I like Chinese food. And when I go into the Chinese restaurant, most of the time there's a little fat Buddha sitting there with a lap full of pennies. Because people walk by and they place the pennies for Buddha to pray for them or they pray to I don't know what I don't even know how that works. But that little statue and you rub his belly for luck, they told me. I said, okay. <laughs> you rub his belly till you fall down. But he said, if I call on him in the day of trouble, he will deliver. I believe him. So I'm told me, well, Pastor, you know we need to we need to meditate. I do believe you need to meditate on the things of God. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. My children, I was cooking dinner one day and I was in the house and Chaz was, I don't know, third or fourth grade and maybe a little younger and he was over there in the kitchen in the corner. I was watching him and I, did, I, I didn't understand what he was doing. I wasn't really paying too much attention. But he was over there in the corner and he was doing stuff like this. <laughs> he was just doing that. And then he, he'd get down and he was doing all this different. And finally I saw him, what are you doing? They're teaching us this in school. It's called yoga, Daddy. I went to the school the next day. Amen. Walked through that school. Where's the PE teacher? What's her name? Miss Howard. Oh, hi, Miss Howard. My children don't do that. Oh, well, I'm just teaching them the meditation part. I, I don't care what you're teaching them. They, my children Amen. don't do that. Oh, I'm not teaching them the religion. I said, but you're teaching them something from that. That's religion. right. That's right. And I don't want them getting comfortable doing the one-eyed dog and the, and the, the, the yeah. whatever, the crashing duck. I, I don't know if I do this, the dying duck. I, you know. And she was looking at me so strange, and she kept trying to convince me. We're just trying to teach them how to calm down and how to have peace. And I looked at her. I said, I teach my children to get their peace from Jesus. She got away from it real quick. So I went in the office and found the principal and I said, my children don't do that. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. And I put it in writing. You find something else for them to do. Mm -hmm. well, we're just teaching. She tried to convince me. We're just teaching them the exercises. I don't want them learning the exercises. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's right. Find out where your peace comes from. Right. It comes from Jesus. Jesus. I don't know how many times I had to go to that school and tell them my children don't do this or that or the other. And one day I walked into the school before I worked for the schools. I walked in and I saw Christian, this one right here, sitting in the office, coloring. And I looked and I said, uh, oh, I see you in here. Oh, well, I mean, this is the principal talking. I've instructed all the teachers that if a Spalding child says that they are not to watch something or do something that they that they either need to change the activity for the entire class or send the child to me and I'll let them color. He's not in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there were children mad at my children because they couldn't watch Scooby-Doo. They would say, I'm not allowed to watch that. And so the instruction was if a spalling child says they can't, then the whole class can't. You can change things if you stand up for something. I didn't ask 
ask him to do that. I just told him, don't let my child participate in that. And so those principles, it was just easier for her because I had so many children. It was just easier for her to say, uh, if, if the Spalding says it, don't do it. Just don't do it. Otherwise, she'd have had all seven of them in her office, I guess. Stand up for what's right. That's right. Stand up for who Jesus is in your life. Stand up and be counted. Come on, somebody. Stand up for what's right. Jesus stood up. Jesus hung up there. Somebody wrote a song and said he was hung up for my hangups. He hung up there for all the problems I was going to have. He had a more coach shot. When he got up with all power in his hand, not today. I can walk in healing because of Jesus. I can walk in deliverance because of Jesus. I can walk out of things that the enemy set for me and walk back into what God has for me because of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. I can overcome because of Jesus. I can give up sin because of Jesus. I can become stronger because of Jesus. All because of what he did for me. Listen, I didn't just start believing and stop right there. You believe and then you go on and let God work in your life. You believe and let him change your mind. Believe and let him fill you with the Holy Ghost. Peter was preaching to a group of people that believed in Jesus. But he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? So now we need an experience. I was three years old, come home from church on a Wednesday night. Went in the bathroom, we're getting ready for bed, and I looked up at my mama and I said, Mama, how do I become a Christian? And she said, you ask Jesus into your heart. And she led me through the sinner's prayer right there in Henrietta, Oklahoma, in the bathroom on a Wednesday night. And she looked at me, I was about three years old, and she said, how do you feel? And I remember saying this, I feel Jesus' fingers all nice and warm around my heart. I felt a warmth in me, I'll never forget that. And, and, and we kept going to church. And kept shouting and kept dancing and kept praising God. And I'm watching wide eyed and, and oh wow, look at this. Five years old in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, in a little revival my mother was playing for. I got in the prayer line because everybody else was in the prayer line. So I'm there five years old, waiting in line to get prayer. Before I got to the front, something hit me and I woke cold about how shit tell the Begin to flow out of me and I woke cold and they can't do the I shun the little And when I got up to the front of the line, the evangelist looked and said, This baby's speaking in tongues. And I remember my mother started playing the piano a little bit harder. She started singing a little bit louder because her baby was coming through. And I and she was just playing. And I was over there cold up. I said, I'm cold, shut it in the eye. I never forgot that experience. And I'm so thankful today that I had an encounter with God. It's not just a story. It's not just a fable. It's not something my mother talked about and I heard about it and now it's just something that used to be. But I thank God that today I'm 43 years old and next month I'll be 44 years old and I got a mind to serve God and I'm still filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I can lay hands on people and see them healed. I can speak to the devil and he got the go. But it didn't come because I believed and forgot about it. I kept believing and kept working and kept praying and kept fasting and kept receiving good teaching. See, some of us, we do pretty good, but you go to preaching too much about what we're doing and then, well, you lose us. Let, let me tell you how I can shout. Let, let, let's dance. I've had people come in here, they like to dance. They like to live, they at least like to watch us dance. And so they'll say, uh, well, y'all gonna dance tonight? <laughs> And I said, well, I don't know. I believe that before it's over, we might shout. But I don't want to be in here just doing something. We owe God praise and the Spirit of God wants to lay on the floor and cry for three hours. That's what we need to do. Amen. We got a reputation for being a church full of joy and happiness, and that's, that's great. But we, we want to be a church that's known for letting God have his way. That's right. Yes. How many want God to have his way in your life? Yes. Have you had an experience with the Lord? When you've had that experience, don't. Don't let go of that thing. Amen. Once the writer said, don't cast away, cast not away your confidence. Right. How many know we are in a time right now where everything that's going on in this world is against Christ? Yes. Yes. You got people explaining the Bible away. Yes. Hmm. Well, they don't really mean that. Well, you know, that was a man who wrote it. The Bible said all scripture was given by the inspiration yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Come on. And I, I ask myself this, and I ask everybody, how much of the Bible are we having to ignore, to do, and live the way we want to live? How much are we having to pretend it don't mean that? 
Somebody texted me the other day and they said, what is the scripture that your mother used to keep your dad's wife out of her house? Because my, my, my dad's wife used to come and sit up in the house and watch cartoons with me. Hmm. My mom sitting in the room just hurting because the, the lady who stole her husband was sitting in the living room watching her television. One day she left out of the house and my mother said to the Lord, Lord, is this required? That I do this? This hurts so much. The Lord spoke to her and said, anoint your door. All right. And plead the blood. All right. Don't say nothing. All right. So mom anointed the door and she pled the blood. And I don't remember that woman ever coming back to watch cartoons with me. She would come and open the door and throw the child support check in the door. But she wouldn't come in the house. So somebody said to the other day, what's the scripture your mama used? And I was like, I don't remember. And I was talking to my wife. I said, do you remember what scripture mom used? She said, my wife said, your mother's something else. She said, she'd take a coat hanger and make a sword out of it. <laughs> <laughs> take some of those scripture and just whip the devil up. So I called mother and I said, well, I just bled the blood. How I many know we got power in the name of Jesus? Yes. There is power in the name of Jesus. We have authority through the blood of Jesus. Because of what Christ did, we now have a right to the tree of life. Yes. How many, raise your hand if God's ever healed you. Hallelujah. Ooh, we got some testimonies around this room. We got some testimonies around this room where God has healed. Yes. Mother, Mother Hall has had breast cancer. She don't have cancer and didn't have no surgery. Come on. She showed up at the mansion talking about, Mother, I got cancer. The doctor said, I got cancer. And she said, Mother looked at her. She said, well, that ain't no bigger than a cold. She said, so? That's no bigger than a cold for Jesus. Sometimes people get a report from the doctor and they feel like, that's it. Buy my tombstone, pay for the plot, and pick out your cancer. Give God a chance to heal you. Because it's provided. I mean, no, it's provided. Listen, if you have to have surgery and you didn't get a healing, don't don't blame God. Don't get mad. Just Amen. Thank God you didn't die while they were operating on you. Come on, it's all right. It's still God. It's still God. He didn't let you die on the operating table. It's still God. He didn't let the doctor cut out the wrong thing. It's still God. Come on. Sister Emma sitting up here today. Doctor said, go have her checked out. She probably got cancer. Took her back to the doctor. She ain't got nothing. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, come on, y'all. Hallelujah. And so Janet Tucker sitting back there. She's been at death's door more than once. Looking through the window. But God. She's sitting back there today. But God. You may be going through some serious stuff, but God. Yeah, but God. Even though he was dying and then he gave up the ghost, yeah. he came back alive. Yeah. And the Bible says if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised him up from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. You see some of us, you know, someone asked me the other day, and I've had an idea, what does that mean? Y'all do that. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of the young people doing something like that. Like, what is that? That ain't no quickie. <laughs> I've seen choirs doing that. I'm like, stop that. <laughs> but when you're talking about the goodness of Jesus and some just come from down and hit, hey, glory to God. Hey, whoa, shot on a little coat. You're talking to somebody. How you doing? Oh, I'm glad to more cold. I'm blessed. Amen. It just, it just comes from down on the inside. Jesus said in John uh, 7, 38, he said, If you believe on me as the scripture has said it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hey. Well, you got that river of living water. See, but the thing is, you got to believe on Jesus as the scripture has said it. Not your grandma's version of Jesus. Not your great great grandpa's version of Jesus. Some some of us, not even your pastor's version of Jesus. Because some of these churches that are sitting around here, God didn't have nothing to do with them even being started. Oh God! Oh God! Well, pastor, we were feeling good. Now you done stepped over here. I took my glasses off. I ain't looking at nobody. I can't even see y'all good. 
<laughs> Some of the stuff that people are saying that God had told him to do, he didn't speak to him. Oh, but I had a dream. You ate pizza before you went to sleep. <laughs> Don't you know the devil can give you dreams? Yes. Husbands mm -hmm. leaving their wife mm -hmm. and going finding somebody else because they had a dream about somebody. Jesus. Ministers getting up and talking about, she well, the Lord me. told me to leave my wife. She Lying devil, God ain't never told nobody to leave this thing. The only time he said, if the unbeliever depart, the believer is under no bondage. There you go, right there. Very small fine print. Jesus told him, he said, the only reason Moses even gave you the, the bill of divorcement in the first place is because of the hardness of your heart. Right. What a sin. Husbands and wives, especially saved husband and wife, they're supposed to forgive one another. That's right. yes. Look at your husband if you got one here and say, I forgive you. Yes. Look at your wife if you got one here and say, I forgive you. I forgive All you. right. <laughs> it's good to practice forgiveness. That's right. It's good to practice forgiveness. It's good to practice staying in fellowship with one another. Amen. We took a choir trip to California several years ago, me and Sister Dolly and, and Sister Sherry and another lady. We drove out there, sang at Apostle Charles's church. And, and by the time we got ready to come back, we were not speaking to each other. We weren't married then. We were just all in the choir. And we were done. We were done. We're sitting in the same restaurant just looking at the floor. We were, we were mad. We were done with each other. You want to get to know people, travel with them. Because after a while, all the pretty niceness you know, leaves and they're tired. They don't care. They don't care if they hurt you. They don't care what they say. They don't care what bodily functions they allow to happen. They just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> One of the ladies in the choir was sitting in the back of my van and she just spilling gas and spraying air freshener. I'm like, I can't help it. Huh. We were ready to put her on the side of the road. <laughs> we were done. We were done. We were not speaking to each other. And I thought, we have a 24, 26, we'll seem like three day hour trip ahead of us and we're not speaking to each other. Sitting in this restaurant, mad at each other, trying to eat something, getting ready to come back on the road. And I said, I can't, I can't drive back with these people like this. And so, you know, most restaurants, you, you know, if they're having a salad, they put crackers on the table. So I picked up a cracker. And I opened up the package and I pulled it out and I looked at one of them and I said, will you break cracker with me? Break cracker. <laughs> we started having a bread breaking right there at the table. Look at here. All right. Dolly, you were there. After we broke bread, we broke that cracker with one another. I think there was four of us there. We broke bread together and just forgave one another. We were able to come back in peace. Praise God. See, we're not supposed to fall out with one another. Covenant don't walk out on covenant. That's right. I say that and I mean it. And you're in a covenant relationship. You you may be, have misunderstandings and you may have uh, hurt feelings, but you don't walk out. That's right. On covenant. When you're in a covenant relationship, you don't give up on people just because they hurt your feelings, just because they yeah. did you wrong or you think yeah. they did you wrong. Yeah. Most of the time, it's a misunderstanding. Most of the, yeah. the Bible said, in all you're getting, get an understanding. Yeah. Understanding will keep you. I've had to swallow a lot and I've had to not say a lot in my lifetime and I've had to give a, a lot and I've had and, and you know and I'm not ignorant to know the people when they're dealing with me have got to swallow sometimes and have got to forgive and all of that stuff I'm not standing here saying I'm a bed of roses and everybody ought to you know right right but we ought to love one another That's right That's enough right. See, if you really love somebody the Bible says love hopes all things yeah. Yeah. So if somebody's hurting you, I told somebody one time I said this person really hurt me, but the, what keeps me is I don't believe that they have a malicious bone in their body. My, my, my. And they didn't mean to hurt me. So that helps me to love them and forgive them when I know their motive was not out to get me. Right, right, that's right. But see, the enemy would like to talk to me and say, oh, everybody's out to get that's you. That's right. They did that because they can't stand you. All of they did that because they don't like you. They yeah. did that because they're jealous of you. Oh, my God, the devil has got some stuff to say. That's right. But I didn't. I didn't get where I am today, and I'm, I'm, I'm on my way somewhere by holding on to grudges. Thank you, Lord. I didn't get to the place where I can minister to people that are in bad conditions because I held on to grudges. 
I didn't get to the point where I can give food to the man who molested me and minister to him in the natural by holding that grudge. Yes. When he calls me and says, I'm hungry, I need some food, yes. I take Amen. it to him. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on. Yes. Or I tell him to come get it. What? <laughs> Somebody, ooh -wee. They got mad at me. You shouldn't give him the time of day. And chat, and well, they went off their soapbox about pedophile and all that stuff. And I was like, just shut up. I've forgiven it. Amen. God has healed me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, and when you allow God to heal you, yeah. listen to me, this is serious right here. When you allow God to heal you, of whatever the hurt is. Yes. That was mine. That was part of my testimony. That's Your testimony made completely different. Come on. But when you allow God to heal you yes. of the emotional scars that the enemy has inflicted upon you. Someone told me yesterday, said, I can forgive, but I can't forget. I still remember what happened. But Mother Bryant, it's like it happened in a dream. I know that. It's like it happened to somebody yes. else. I, I know it was there. Yes. I know that it happened. But I can tell you, God yes. heal. Right. I'm not hurt by That's that anymore. I'm, I'm not wounded by that anymore. The blood of Jesus has covered me and has healed yes. me. And I don't walk around with that chip on my shoulder. I'm a victim and I'm, I'm going to do this. because I Listen, the, come on. The enemy wants us to become a statistic. Yes. Molesters must become molesters. My father committed adultery and left my mother, so I've got to commit adultery and leave my wife. My father abandoned me, so I've got to abandon my children. I don't want my children to ever deal with days where, you know, where's daddy? Is daddy coming home tonight? I don't know. Come on. That's, that, that's, that's my commitment. That's my, you know, and there have been times that my wife and I have been angry with each other, frustrated with each other, sitting in the same room, not speaking to each other. Thank God for text messages. <laughs> I say it often, text message, you saved our marriage. <laughs> Sitting in the same room, not even talking to each other. <laughs> One of us got to take the first text. <laughs> Listen, she, she tells us so well. She said, in that, I can, I can get everything out that I was feeling without him interrupting me. <laughs> and we got to learn how to listen to what people are saying without... With actually listening to what they're saying and not just sitting there waiting for them to shut up so you can retaliate. Right, right. Communication is not you sitting there waiting so you can get a clap back. It's waiting so you can listen to what they're saying. And you might even have to sit there and be quiet for a minute while you process what all they're saying. Even after they've quit talking. Yes. That's good communication. That's good communication. Let's allow God to work in our lives and let's allow God to heal us. He provided it. Yes, he did. He provided it. We don't have to go out of here another Sunday, another week, another month, another year and carry the same baggage and the same wounds and the same hurts. They talk about how we carry baggage into relationships and, and the women hurt men because of their past relationships and vice versa and all of that. But we should not be holding on to stuff and carrying it around with us. We should be allowing the Amen. Lord to heal us Amen. so that we can be whole. How many want to be whole? Lady, young ladies, I want you to hear Pastor C. And I want you to listen. This is so serious. And so many of you are in a dating posture. You're looking for somebody. Somebody's looking for you. I don't, I don't know. But it's so serious that they be a whole person. And that you be a whole person. Please don't get caught up in, oh, I think I can fix him. Oh, I think I can fix her. Because you will be disappointed. Amen. You can't fix people. You know, I, I've seen people marry them. I'm going to marry them and, 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 and God's going to get them saved. That's so out of line with the Word of God. The Bible says if you join yourself to a harlot, you become a harlot. You'll join them before they join you. Yeah, that's right. That's the way it works. Right. It's serious. You're looking for somebody. you praying for somebody. And, and, and they they got some of the... Don't settle. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't settle. Don't settle. He smells good, but don't have a job. He's, you know, <laughs> he needs to have a. He needs to be a whole person for you. Yes. He needs to have a whole job, <laughs> his own whole place to live, yes. driving a whole car, <laughs> not his mama's car, <laughs> not the rental that he paid for with his tax refund. And as soon as that's gone, the rental's gone too. Be serious. 
And if he, listen, most of us have, most of y'all have an idea what you want. And if he's not that, quit messing with him. If you wouldn't marry them, don't date them any further. People hang around with stuff that they would not be involved in and end up in situations that they're stuck in for the rest of their life. Jesus. Can I say this resurrection Sunday? How'd you get here? I don't know, but I'm here. Here we are. It's necessary. Because God, I don't want to see, you know, we, 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 we get up here, we might preach against divorce or we might preach whatever. And some people have already been divorced. Nobody trying to condemn nobody. That's right. But if we can not, if we can do better going from here forward, right. if my testimony can help somebody from making yeah. the same mistakes, if we can preach some truth and it helps you not make that same mistake and not get caught up in that trap, then praise God. Amen. Amen. I encourage young people and old people, everybody, if you're trying to have children, just go ahead and let all your children have the same mama, all your children have the same daddy. But if you've already got a bunch of children, you already got two or three baby mama, baby daddy drama, all the drama in your life, I'm not trying to condemn you, but let's help the next generation not make that same mistake. Come on, somebody! we got young women walking around here that are barely big as a minute talking about, I don't want to die yet. Why you want to die? Because somebody told you you were fat? You look in the mirror, what do you see? Don't get no eating disorder. The devil will mess with your mind. Have you know about killing yourself, trying to look a certain way for somebody? Amen. There's something going on right now where they're having a challenge. I want to got young ladies holding up a piece of notebook paper in front of them, and trying to get so skinny that you can't see them behind that notebook paper. They're killing themselves. Jesus. Don't want your waist to be bigger than eight and a half inches. That's a trick of the devil. That's a trick of the Yeah, we need to be healthy. But you, you just, come on. So my daughter begins to date somebody, and they oh, you're so pretty. I want her to look at them and go, I know. <laughs> my daddy and all five of my brothers tell me that every day. I don't need you to tell me that. Tell me something I don't know. Oh, let me change games. <laughs> Come on. You ought to be able to smell mess a mile away, much mess as we live around, much as we see, and how much we've had to pray people out of mess. Yes. We shouldn't be getting caught up in any mess. That's right. God's got somebody for you. But maybe you need to consider that if God ain't giving you somebody right now, you don't need them right now. Praise he wants to get closer to you. Praise and the Bible says that a single person can please God more. Some people don't like that scripture. Well, I didn't write it. No, he said a single person can be more concerned about what pleases God. Yeah, it's true. And a married person, you know, you have a sin if you get married, but you're more concerned about pleasing your wife or your husband. It doesn't mean you can't be saved and be married. He said if you if you marry, you've not committed any sin, but you're going to suffer. That's in the Bible too. If I can just get me a wife, my ministry is going to take off. Dude, you are going to suffer. <laughs> Mother Tucker used to say, if you don't want a boss, don't get married. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, I don't know how I drove before we got married. I, I, just have, you know, I don't know how I got anywhere before I got married. I taught her how to drive. <laughs> I don't know how we got, you know. Well, she said, that's why you're tired. You go around doing everything the hard way. <laughs> See, I'm coming up on a corner. I'll get over, but she's like, you should have got over back there. You need to turn your blinker on because they don't know you want to go. They can't read your eyes. <laughs> and I like to turn. You know, I'll just go and I'll zigzag across. And I go, I'll go down 41st of Yale and then up Yale to 51st and then go again over to 61st. And I'll just, I like to do this. You just like to feel it turning your hands, don't you? You just like doing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned to try to drive in a straight line when she's in the car. <laughs> turn every once in a while. I just can't take out a turn. <laughs> and I learned that when she was pregnant and she would say, I'm hungry. We call that hangry. You know? Hungry and angry. Hangry. <laughs> <laughs> she would say, I'm hungry. Well, Brother Dad Brian, I would say in my head, okay, I'm going to go to this particular place. Well, she wasn't in my head. So I'm passing McDonald's, I'm passing Burger King, I'm passing all these other cafes, and Long John Silver's, and, and Captain D's, and I'm on my way to where I was 
thinking I would go. And by the time I got there, she didn't want to get out of the car. She's so angry. I'm like, what's wrong with you? You passed all these places. And I need to eat now. And I said, well, I decided. She said, but you didn't tell me. I didn't know what you were doing. I thought you were ignoring me. So I learned when she'd say, I'm hungry. How many men know? <laughs> the question of well, what do you want yes. takes you nowhere. Because she'll say, I don't care, but she really does. <laughs> because when you pull up to where you go, oh, not this place. I, but you said you didn't care. <laughs> All the married men in the church said, Amen. But I learned to deal with that. Why? Because I love her. That's right. And she loves me. That's yes. right. That's right. Amen. And, and, and if we were, if she said I'm hungry, and we were in front of a McDonald's, we just had nuggets. I mean, that's just how it would. There it is. Nuggets. What do you want? How many? How many nuggets do you want? Twenty, forty? Come on. She was carrying my child. I needed to take care of her. That's right. That's right. Come on. Right. Amen. That's another message. That's right. Amen. But let's listen, young ladies and young men. Let's get, let's let the Lord heal us from our past right. before we mess up any more yes. lives. Yes. Let God heal you before you mess yes. up anybody else. Yes. Let God heal them before they mess you up. Yes. Yes. And don't be afraid to be alone. Right. Don't be afraid to be single. There's no shame in it. Right. Right. There's no shame in being single if you're living right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see anybody going from man to man, from woman to woman. Be serious. God, listen, God has what you need, yes. and He knows when you need it. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. He knows when you need it. He knows how to get it to you. Because His blessings maketh rich in what? And no sorrow. sorrow. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. Well, we thank God today for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He, he did all of that. And today, in this world that we're living in, we can still call on the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We can still, people can still be saved. People can still be reconciled. People, listen, backsliders can still come back to the house Amen. of God. Amen. Nobody's too far gone. As long as you're breathing, you have an opportunity to say, Lord, here I am. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Here I am, Lord. I'm yours. Make me, mold me, shape me. In Romans 8 and 26, he said the Spirit helps our infirmities. He's praying for us and groanings and utterances that cannot be uttered. Groanings that cannot be uttered. Come on. The Spirit of God is praying for every one of us. Whatever condition you are in today, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I won't say I don't care, but it doesn't matter what the condition is. His blood is still works. Look at your neighbor and tell him the blood still works. The power still there. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. There's still deliverance in Zion. There's still power for every one of us to receive what we need from the Lord. And just like the centurion standing at the foot of the cross who said, surely this was the Son of God. God will do things in your life that will convince you and everybody around you that He is still God. He'll show Himself strong in our lives. Somebody say yes. yes. He's going to show Himself strong in your life if you say yes to Him. Saying yes to God means that you're getting in agreement with Him. I can't do it my way, Lord. I tried it and it wasn't working. And I, and I went so far and I, you know, we ought to get tired of beating our head against the same wall. But step back and let God fix it. Let Jesus fix it. Amen. Amen. Stand your feet all over the house. Let Jesus fix it for you, for he knows just what to do. So whenever, whenever you pray, let the Lord, let him have his way. Fix it for you.
come on, we just take a few moments. If you desire prayer, I want you to come right now. You don't have to take a long time. Let him fix it for you. For he knows just what just what to do. So whenever, whenever you pray, let the Lord, let him have his way. Let Jesus, let him fix it for you. Fix it for you.